Next presenter, Axis. Um, Alex is well known. Please come down, Alex. Um, thank you for being continuously part of the technical forum, um, not just to present your machines, but also to really talk about innovations. There is no technical forum without laser innovations, we can say. Um, laser um, has been in the past um, a very important part of producing dyes and coins and will be in the future, I think. Axel, Alex, stage is yours. <laughs> thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, Normally, you are expect from me a very technical-driven presentation with a lots of innovations. Um, but looking at this new beautiful location, I also decided to change things a little bit and uh, talk about today an idea, the idea and the concept of direct laser engraving. You all probably know me, or most of you do. My name is Alexander Aminidis, and my, despite my still relatively younger age in this industry, I'm working, uh, looking at my engraving background almost 20 years now for you guys. So before we go into the idea and the concept of direct laser engraving, let's first uh, take a step back and look at the uh, common requirements and challenges of this industry when it comes to stamping dye production. And I not say what it's today, it's more like what uh, were the requirements of this industry five years ago, 10 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago. So we had to produce a lot of cash, which naturally come with the demand of producing a lot of dyes. Furthermore, the main product was circulation coins. Uh, we rather did uh, very little commemorative coins, bullion coins and metals. Also, there were only very rare changes in design. Probably there were uh, many years ago even the same designs for multiple years. And um, there were also back then a lower durability of working dyes, just seeing what the creation mint uh, achieved in, in dye life, it's just amazing nowadays. And all of these factors made it necessary that we come up with a process to produce a lot of dyes very quickly. And that is hobbing process, we all know hobbing. So let's see how a typical workflow of, uh, of producing dyes look like uh, involving hobbing. And of course, I know every mint is unique, every mint is special, and you all have your, your uh, processes. Um, some use more steps, others use less steps, but this is, an, I would say, a uh, um, proper uh, display of what is, what is the traditional workflow. So you start with your master tool. You do uh, typically a CNC milling in soft steel, then you have to do the hardening. Um, after the hardening, you probably need to retouch the dye, then you're ready to do the hobbing. After the hobbing, um, you have again a, a soft replica, so the dye. So um, this one needs to be machined, then hardened again, and so on and so on. So it takes you weeks until you, or yeah, weeks until you have an actual dye that you can strike. But some of you even repeat that cycle multiple times because you don't go from hub directly to dye, you go from master hub to master die, and then from production hub to production die. So instead of weeks, you sometimes wait even months until you have an actual product that you could strike. So let's look a little bit about the more common and updated requirements of this industry in terms of um, and production of stamping dies. And I got that feedback by speaking to, to um, many mints over the last years. And uh, the good news is we still have to produce a lot of cash, but the amount of dies that we need to produce this amount is uh, less. Also, there's now a much higher number of commemorative coins, billion coins and medals that we produce. Also, there are much more infrequent design changes. And also, we have a higher durability of stamping dies. Um, we have a better knowledge how material flows, material is better overall, now we have PVD coating, and so on and so on. And this brings me to the concept and the idea of direct laser engraving. Producing directly a stamping tool, especially with laser, is not something completely brand new, but um, lasers back then, or engraving technology overall, was a little bit too slow, and we had to produce too many dyes, so it was not really suitable for us. But with the uh, new implementation and the adjustments and the improvement access is done to its system, now this idea comes in a very, very good reach. One of these um, uh, adjustments and improvements is the premium performance laser scan head. This is a new hardware and also we made some software changes in terms of how we um, tackle delays, uh, how we do the tool pathing and so on. And with this technology we could decrease engraving time drastically. In some cases we could even decrease engraving times by 70% which makes it basically three times faster.
The second thing is the introduction of femtosecond laser. The femtosecond laser will give you the same quality and same speed comparable to a picosecond laser, but with the femtosecond laser, we developed a process which we call pulse forging. And pulse forging um, allows you to rebuild a silver shiny effect and smooth out your surface, similar to uh, polishing. And very interesting and very important to know is that pulse forging is a cold process. So you don't change any hardness, you don't change any material properties, you yeah, don't change anything. So let's look how a direct laser engraving workflow could look like. Direct laser engraving allows you to independently produce dyes. So you can already produce your die, standard diameter, already hardened, already polished, maybe a rim, maybe there's already a dome, and you put them in the shelf, protect, in a protected environment, and um, these dies are waiting to be used for your production. So you get the contract from your customer, dear Mint, please produce me some coins. You take out the amount of dies that you need from the stock, you load your design, you load the machine, uh, maybe you scan a code or something, maybe it can be automized, and then you just press start on the machine and you will do the engravings. And um, depending on how many engravings you do, um, you will be finished within a couple of days instead of waiting months. A lot of my customers already use this direct laser engraving process for some of their projects. And I was asking them uh, if they can share with me some experiences or even data. And these are the six key findings. So first one uh, was that uh, one mint looked at the average amount of dyes that they needed to complete their projects. So speaking about circulation as well as maybe projects where you only need a handful of dyes. And in average, you only needed 25 dyes to complete a project. Also, it becomes very easy to engrave complicated designs, high relief, or even shaped product shape tools, three-dimensional tools. Just for example, look again, Croatia mint, the. Uh, I think Guinness World Records smallest coin, um, the two millimeter gold coin um, engraved with uh, Axis Femto. When it comes to data, the durability of direct engraved dies is no different than traditional manufactured dies. Um, the data that uh, I was presented didn't show any differences. Also, or well, part of the presentation, part of the innovations that we did is that we heavily reduced engraving time. We added new features like the pulse forging technique to polish your surface. Um, also at the IMDTC project, Alternative Methods, the US Mint together with the Royal Australian Mint, they prepared an Excel program where each mint can put in their individual values, labor time, machining time, other parameters, and the, the program will indicate you which process is the uh, most efficient. Um, also, and that is very important for me, when you do direct engraving, you involve less production steps, and that gives you a high consistency and true to shape workpieces. There is no big deviation from die to die. You always are expected to have the same result. And it's light that you use as a tool. It's a laser. Light cannot break, it cannot bend, it cannot wear off. If you set up properly your machine, you always expect the perfect result. So let's look at a couple of samples that we were able to engrave for a couple of few mints. So five euro cent tool we were able to engrave with all of these technologies, including engraving, pulse forging, frosting, in only 17 minutes. A two euro design, 42 minutes. One dollar design in 39 minutes. And remember, you can use that machine 24 seven. You only need to unload and reload, and even that could be automized. These are just some uh, circulation examples. So what about other examples? Like uh, a typical commemorative product, 30 in diameter, which only, um, we took only two hours engraving time. High relief products, two millimeter in depth, only 12 hours, which are phenomenal numbers. So what could be the benefit of you when you use direct laser engraving? So you reach a new level of production flexibility also, you have a much higher reaction time, which then could lead in lower lead times to produce and sell actually your product. Design development becomes very easily. You can put in a high grade of automization because you always have consistent and true to shape work pieces. Because you involve less material, less machinery, it's very resource and energy saving. And also, with these kind of machines nowadays, you cannot only do engraving. You can do frostings, multi-frostings, gradient frostings, rainbow effects, security features, lented images, microtexting, pulse forging now. So you could include many, many different things. So again, for the IMDTC project alternative methods, 
um, the, I think it was the Portugal Mint, um, sent out a survey to all of you mints asking what is the current process that you use for producing your stamping dies. And there is no question about it, hubbing is still the king. We all know hubbing, it is a well working, a good working process, so there's no question about it. But we can also see that laser direct engraving is the technology with the highest number of increases over the recent year. So more and more of you use already this technology to directly produce your dies. So what is the conclusion? My personal beliefs. If the trends continues that we have seen in a recent year, I really see that direct laser engraving will be more and more common and more and more used and we uh, gain more experiences, we learn about it and we get even better than nowadays. And I already hear some arguments going off in your heads, but Alex, for political reasons or legal reasons, we're not allowed to use direct engraving. Sometimes we require a master tool and yeah, it's true. But if there's something that helps us, that makes us better, to earn more money, to be just faster in all of the things, closing the gap to our competition, then maybe it's time to change that. And I also don't like the idea to pit technologies against each other and saying this is bad, this is good. I think every technology has its advantages and it's, about, uh, it's up to you as a mint to look at the data at the different processes and decide which one is the most efficient and which one you should use. And I'm already at the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.